Greetings. This is video 11 on the Learning Maple series. This one we're going to do single variable calculus, limits, and derivatives. Let's get started. Okay, the concept of a limit does not come up too frequently in solving problems in physics, but they are useful in terms of seeing what values are in certain extreme cases. And to do a limit is to do pretty much the what you learned in calculus. So make sure you have the calculus palette. And if you can see right the very first one is there's a limit. So what we can do is we can say x tab goes to 2 tab of my function, which is maybe sine of x times x. And hopefully this is one you can actually do yourself. And clearly the result is when it goes to 2, it's 2 sine 2. Probably something that's more useful is to ask what happens at extremes. Click limit again. X tab goes to infinity. Escape to turn an infinity of, say, 1 over x squared. So what is that value when it goes to infinity? It should be a 0. Um, one can also do this straight by calling the limit command, such as limit of 1 over x, comma, x goes to infinity. And that is same thing, and this is 1 over 0. OK, you can also do functions. f of x colon equals sine of x over x. So there's our function. And again, if we simply say, what is the limit as for f of x, as x eventually approaches 0, it will do the calculation, and that value is 1. There's one other way to do this, and it's called the inert format. And I'll just show it, but we'll see more of it in the next video. Let's say my limit consists of my limit, colon equals, and then I write capital limit. And so now f of x as x goes to 0. And so what this does is this sets up the actual limit that you're going to do. To determine the value of it, you ask for what is the value of my limit. And it will do the calculation, and that's one. I'll pause here to allow you to see if you can reproduce what I've done. OK, in the document, I show other examples, such as what if we have a discontinuity and we want to see what happens when we approach x equals 2 from the left or the right. And again, you can add in uh, the essentially modifier of which side, and it will give you two results. So I'll let you practice here on some examples. Here are actually two physics examples that do come up. And let's see if by using the limit function, you can get the answers. I'll pause. And hopefully you got the same results as I did in this calculation. Notice in one case, I actually needed to tell uh, Maple that the constants were all positive. And I do this by saying, assume positive. All right, let's go back and look at some more problems. OK, the next step is to look at differentiation. And fortunately, again, Maple provides a palette in order to do a derivative. So let's say we have a function, and we know a is essentially a constant. Again, in physics, almost all constants are positive. And if I want to basically calculate df dx, all I have to do is click on the icon dx x, and I can put in my expression f, and it will do that calculation. Another way you can get, oops, another way you can get df dx, if you type it incorrectly, is to use the prime function right here, the prime operator. And that does the same thing. So again, here's the f. I want to take f prime. So that means it takes the derivative with respect to x, evaluate at x, and it will do this calculation there. Whoops, I made a mistake here. I want the first derivative. I don't know where I got that x prime. There we go. OK, see, we make mistakes. It's easy to fix them. Second derivative, not a problem. The second derivative of f with respect to x squared, not surprisingly, choose the dx icon. Put the x there, put my expression f, and there it is as well. Okay. To do it for double derivative, we just click on this one, f, and again, oops, did it, f 
capital F tab and we get rid of that because that's what we're differentiating and then we go there and then we get our result but let's say f of x is something else say x cubed over cosine of a times x all right so there's my expression and i want to take the derivative of this function no difference you just simply say dx of f of x and we'll put in the x and take the derivative Okay, and again, it assumes that A is a constant. For those of you who know more multivariable calculus, this is a form of a partial derivative. Um, the last thing I should show you is if you just want to call the command, the command is just called DIFF, open parentheses, F of X, and then comma, what do we want to differentiate with respect to? In this case, we want to differentiate with respect to X, and there is our derivative. If I want to do the double derivative, t2f dx, colon equals, I differentiate f of x with respect to x once and x again, and that will do that calculation. And aren't you glad that you didn't do this yourself? I'll pause here to see if you can reproduce. Okay, here are some practice problems. This type of practice problem comes up a lot in physics. We are always interested in what happens at the extreme, what happens at the maximum point, what happens at the minimum point. So using a derivative is a way for us to determine those points and determine the functions at those points. Okay, so let's say we have a function here, and again, a and c are constants, so we're gonna differentiate this with respect to x. I ask you to write it out as an equation where the first derivative of this function is equal to zero. Why do we know that? Because when we solve for it, we are finding the local uh, places of that equilibrium, i.e. a place where the slope of this function is zero. That's an extreme point. So if you can then evaluate f of x at these locations, and if you're good, you can actually figure out which one is a maximum point and which one's a minimum point. Pause here and try it yourself. Okay, so here's the solutions. So again, there's our function. We calculate the first derivative and there's the expression. We set this expression equal to zero and call that our equation. We then solve this equation for x and we get two terms, two expressions here. Notice one happens to be a positive, one's on the right side of the axis, one's on the left side. Then we can take each one. Here's the first one, x max one. And here's the second one, x max 2, and we can put them back into the functions, and we get two values, this one here and that one there. If you don't like those answers for f values, you can simplify each one of them. Okay. Now, to figure out which one is the maximum, which one's the minimum, one can plot it out for some example set of constants. And again, this is very useful skill set to have to visualize a function, okay, when you don't know what the values are. And then, of course, what you can do is you can take the second derivative. You take the second derivative and evaluate these two points. You notice the this location is has a second derivative, which is positive, which means concave up. So this is a minimum. This one is negative, concave down. This is a Second location is a maximum point. All right. There's also some good examples done in the document. Let's go on and see what else we have. Okay. So what if I want to create functions out of my derivatives? Well, the most straightforward way is to, say, start with my function. Take the f prime. In this case, this is a f prime of t as opposed to f prime of an expression. And it ends up with an expression. So dfdt is an expression. So this is not a function. So in order actually to make a function, I have to unapply t out of it so that t is a variable that goes into this expression. Another way to do this, which is probably more preferable, is to actually use the d operator, which is just capital D. And we'll put it on f. And what it does is it recognizes that function f has only one variable, t, and therefore it will take the derivative and then basically do two tasks at once. And this is useful so that if I want to the plot, say, f of t and df of t, 
from t equals minus five to five. And let's put a legend in here because then we can see which one is our function and which one is the derivative of our function. Okay, as you can see, the red is our function and the blue is the derivative. And you can, again, treat this derivative as a function rather than just as an expression. Basically, what is happening here is it's creating a dummy variable and it's first evaluating the expression. First, it's doing the derivative and then evaluating it at a location using this dummy variable. I can actually write this this way. DF version 2 of T is evaluate the expression differentiating F of, and I'm going to call it capital T because capital T is my uh, dummy variable with respect to capital T. And the reason I put the single quotes around capital T is I don't want capital T to be assigned any value. It will purely come out as capital T. Then I need to essentially say, let's evaluate this expression, which is in terms of capital T, where capital T is now equal to T. And there is an idea there. So again, that if I go back and if I plot DF version two, I will get exactly the same answer. I'll pause here to let you try it. So from this, we can look at an example from mechanics. For example, I want to plot in two dimensions the position of object. So that's R as a vector, and it changes with time. There's the X component. There's the Y component. To take the derivative, I'm basically taking the function, differentiating with respect to a dummy variable, and then assigning to that dummy variable the value of T. Okay. Uh, careful with this particular model is you can never assign capital T a different value. Otherwise, this problem, this command will fail. And then we can plot it. And actually, you can see what happens. There's the object's position in blue. And there's the object's velocity in magenta. The last thing I'll point out is, again, in the document, this is part of a pr the practice problem where we have a function that has two constants, capital A and little a. It's a function of y, and I can actually plot it with some example values for the constants. Um, I'll let you go through it, but I do want to point out in the end that you can come up with actually using what's called the explore function, which allows you to put sliders in to control the variables, to control the constants. And you can change the constants and by changing, by changing the sliders. So as you change the sliders, you can see how it scales differently. You can see what happens when you make A very small or make A very large. Okay. Okay, so that's it for now. In the next video, we talk about doing integrals, both indefinite, definite, and numeric. Hope to see you there.